Okay, so what, what I want to do um, today is let me get back to where we were. So what we were, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do in this part of the class is try to explain the whole story about fermionic quantization and to, to do it in a way that really shows the analogy with the, um, the bosonic quantization, the harmonic oscillator that we've been through before. So uh, I, I started uh, out last time kind of explaining to you about um, kind of the, fermi the fermionic analog of annihilation and creation operators and what their properties were. And then at the end, I kind of started to kind of redefine, you know, just as we define annihilation creation operators as a, a linear combination of um, P's and Q's with complex coefficients in the bosonic case. In the fermionic case, what I want to do is I want to find the analog of P's and Q's by um, kind of write, writing um, the fermionic annihilation creation operators as uh, as complex same kind of li complex linear combinations, but not of P's and Q's, but of things called the uh, called the um, that I call a gamma. And these operators are just going to be kind of finite dimensional operators. So they're really just going to be matrices. So let me go back and get, and, get, and get started to go go back to where we were there. Okay. So. So, so at the end of last time, what, what I did is I, I had these fermionic annihilation creation operators, and I guess you know they satisfied um, a a j a dagger j now anti commutator is a delta j k, and then the and then they're zero. <coughs> And so that so that was these guys, and 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 I, I wrote down kind of one way of kind of implicitly real of explicitly realizing these things as kind of on, on as tensor products of matrices. But I'm gonna uh, that that's not we're gonna try to find better ways of working with these than these in, in terms of the gamma matrices. Actually, somebody maybe John. Okay, um, okay, so. Now, now what I wanted to do, so to, the, to get the definition of uh, a gamma matrices, what I want to do is say that define AJ, and it, it's the same kind of formula as in the, the P plus IQ business, except that instead of a one over square root of two, there's one over a half. There, there's always a factor of two or square roots of two floating around, depending on how you normalize things in this business. And this is the, I found the most convenient one. But then you're going to take them to be um, so we're going to find some things called some operators called gamma, and they're going to be indexed from one to um, up to up to up to two n, uh, up to two d, and so there. This is two j, the two j minus one one, and then you take i times the two j, the even one. Okay, so they're going to be so so the odd ones are going to kind of be analogs of the q's and the even ones of the analogs of the P's in, in this language. And then the adjoint is just the same thing with that. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Okay, so, so now if, if you then figure out what the, um, what the anti-commutation relations of the gammas are, if you, you know, knowing these things, you find out that this is, um, These were gamma j, gamma k plus is two delta j k. So these are these are operators that anti commute for if the indexes are different, if the indices are the same, then you're taking the square, you're taking two copies of the square of the matrix and getting uh, Getting twice twice the identity here. This is means the identity operator. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to define. So, so we're going to take this as. So now I'm going to go back. So so this kind of definition was kind of motivated by 
this this case where the the the, the j's went from one to d and the uh, and the gammas went from one to two d. You had to have twice as many um, you know, indices for the gammas as for these guys. But um, so 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 so, so this, def, this derivation only kind of made sense for you know for an even number of these guys. But there's there's no particular reason you can't just use the same formula and say I want this to be true um, for 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 any number of indices. And so what you want to do, so, so, so this is the definition of a, of a complex Clifford, let me just say this, the complex complex Clifford algebra, or I want to call this um, Cliff NFC. And so, so, so n is n is going to be any any uh, integer, any positive integer, including um, odd ones, uh, is the is the algebra generated by by gamma gamma j, um, and, and oh, and you also need a well, anyway, there's also a, a one, um, and j is equal to one up to n, and um, satisfying so the relations are just just these guys. Okay. Uh, technology is Okay, and so and then, <clears throat> but but you should, should should keep track of the analogy as we go along. So th these are really the, the analogs of the, um, of the of the Q and P operators, and this is kind of the this is kind of the fermionic analog of the um, of the Heisenberg of the Heisenberg commutation relation, except now it's a <clears throat> it's an, it's an anti commutator. Okay. Okay. So now. I won't. So let me just then say, say this. I want. Um, okay. So th this this isn't too hard to prove, but the, the proof I think is isn't actually isn't actually very kind of informative. At least the proofs, the simplest proof I can think of, just it, it involves a bunch of manipulations, which are not so. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say a bit about it in a minute, but, but there, the, there's a basic fact about, about these, which is this. So the claim is that, that the Clifford of, so it, it, if, if you're even, is isomorphic, so there's a, that are, this is an algebra, which is isomorphic to the two to the d c and um, and 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 if it's odd, what you get is you get the same thing. Plus, you get two. You get two copies of this. Okay. And so, I'll, I'll work out some. We'll work with some lower dimensional examples of this. But the if you want to prove this, actually, the most straightforward way of proving it that I know is to you know to figure this out for um. Yeah, figure this out for d is equal to one. And then you know show that you get the um, that it should, you, you can actually kind of by hand figure this out if you've if you if you've got just um, two gamma matrices gamma one and gamma two, and then they satisfy these relations. You can figure out that the way that that that, that algebra is the same as the algebra of, of two by two complex matrices. You can identify gamma one and gamma two as I, I think I actually if I did this I mean did this at some point, but you you figure out which Two by two matrices correspond to gamma one and gamma two, and then you have the identity matrix, 
gamma one, gamma two, and gamma one, gamma two, and those four matrices over the complex numbers, you know, give you a, a, a basis of the of the complex two by two matrices, and you know, and you've got all of them, and when you, if you multiply two of them, you get anyway. It, it, it's just the same thing as two by two matrices. So for D is equal to one, it's pretty easy to see that what these guys generate is just two by two matrices, and for D is equal to and then for, well, for D is equal to zero or one, you can also figure it, you can also check that this is true. And then you, then you, there's an induction step. You can then show that if you increase, if you increase D by one, there's a, um, you're, uh, you, 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 you go from matrices of size two to the D to matrices of size two to the D plus one. So, but, but working out the induction step is a bit tricky. I didn't want, I just wanted to, Oh, I think I won't work that through here, through that here. Okay, but it's but it's a pretty simple story at least. Remember, and everything is complex over you know, the complex numbers. Clifford algebras are they just come in even and odd ones, and the even ones are the simplest ones. They're just they're just matrices with size two to the d, and the odd ones are a little bit more complicated. There's two copies of the matrices. Okay, so that's the story. Um, now let me. Say a bit more about how to think about these things. So, I mean, without trying to explicitly show this, it's for the things that the thing that is pretty easy to see is that as a vector space, so a basis. Uh, a C basis of uh, uh, C is so. This is just using the gener the generators and relations business. Based on the generators and relations, you're going to have one. You're going to have gamma j's. You're going to have all the things that you get with um, j gamma j, gamma k, and here j less than k, because if you take, um, if, if j is bigger than k, then the anti-commutation relation just help, re relates the j bigger than k to the j less than k business. And if j is equal to k, um, j gamma j squared is just going to be, um, it's just going to be the identity. Okay. So you don't, so you only need to, um, you, you, you get new ones which can't be expressed in terms of the others if, if j is less than k. And then same thing, j gamma k gamma l and j less than k l, etc. And, and and then then you have to kind of stop when you get to um when you get to n, and there's gonna be a last one which is gamma one, gamma two. Um, sorry, up, up to gamma n, where you just multiply all, all of the generators. Okay, and, and then you, you you can you can count these things. And one way to count them is to notice is that you get you get one you get um, one copy of each of each if you do. Um, one plus gamma one, one plus gamma two, up to one plus gamma n, and then if you if you and, and then, then looking at this expansion and, and seeing that you, get, that you get these, um, you just see that the, the, the number of terms. So there are are two to the d of these. Uh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, so there, there, no, there, are, there are two to the, so, so there are two to the n um, of, of these basis elements. So, so, so that gets you part of the way to, to showing this, because this shows that, you know, if, if, if n is 2d, then you're going to have um, all I'm claiming that 
this is a basis for all the all of the two all, all of the two to the d by two to the d matrices. But two to the d by two to the t matrices have a you know two to the d squared, which is two two to the n um, uh, basis elements. So at least the number the number of basis elements here here agrees with what I claimed here. Anyway. Okay. okay, and then same same thing the same thing for this. Okay, so 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 this is the story over the com over the complexes. It's pretty pretty simple. But now the thing, the other thing you can do. So 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 now we can do something, which is that you know if if we want to go back to this kind of something like a PQ version, that that, that the PQ version was something that existed before you complexified, and it actually made sense. Um, you know, over, over the reals, over um, the p's and q's were kind of a basis of the real um, uh, dual, of the real dual phase space. And now we, we want, so we want to, to think about um, not complex gamma, gammas, gammas uh, over the com, not an algebra generated over the complexes, but an algebra um, just for every, which is just a real generated by kind of real things, which where you can just take real linear combinations and you're going to have a real algebra. And so now this is just a definition. So real, let's talk about real comprehension. And then you can just define, um, well, there's there's the cliff, so let's we'll define F and R is the, um, I mean, it's, 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 so we, we, we can just use the same definition, so, so it's, the re, it's, it's the algebra over the real, over R, you know, generated gamma j one gener gamma j generators. It, 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 so, so, so this is just really the same definition as over C uh, generators and um, gamma j gamma k equal to two delta j k are um, the other relations. Um, quick question. Yeah. Sometimes we s I see that in physics textbook they define that like, instead of just identity, it's the metric. Yeah. So metric actually, shot. some yeah. So um, that that's the next thing I'm about about to tell you. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So next example. So uh, and, and and actually, yeah. So well, well, we'll get into this in more detail. But it's true that the um. Well, so, well, yeah. Anyway, we're, this is, I'll talk a lot about this later. But but yeah, you're right. So so what's really going on? I'm going to start talking about the relation to geometry soon. And the relation to geometry, these gammas are going to correspond to um, to basis elements in your vector space in your tangent space. And this guy, this guy here is going to is going to correspond to the fact that these are going to correspond to orthonormal basis elements. So orthonormal basis vectors in your in your vector space or in your tangent space, are you, for each one of them, you're going to get, you're going to get a gamma matrix. So we'll, 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 we'll talk a lot more about that in a little while. But maybe, but 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 actually, that, that's I mean that motivates actually one thing that you want to um, that you want to extend this definition of, of, of this. So what you do is because here, what's going to happen in physics is you're going to be interested in the case where, yeah, I mean this this is the year, this is your, me your your metric, if you like, the, if your, your metric tensor, and so you have to, um, and and the time direction is going to have a minus sign with respect to the, um, with respect to the space space directions. And so so you want to, to consider cases in which there there can be a there can be a minus sign here, not just a positive plus sign. So there's a more general thing which are called R S. R um, is given by the things where you've got gamma j, gamma k, try to plus there, and then that, then you're going to put either a plus or minus here. 
Okay. And we're and, and we're gonna so we're gonna take um, the plus is gonna be if uh, j is equal to one up to r, and the minus if j is equal to um, r r up to r plus s, which is a. So 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 the case where um, where s is equal to zero. So, 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 th so this is this the s is equal to zero case is, is, is just what the one we already had. This this is a special case of this, but there's there's a greater degree of generality of putting in plus or minus signs here. Okay. And one thing to so and and, and, so, and this business of putting in plus or minus signs um, is kind of specific to to, to the, the real case. If you try if you try to put a negative Oh, well, yeah, R plus one. That, thanks, thanks. You're right. Thanks, 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 thanks. thanks. That's right. But there, but there are S minus signs and R plus signs. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now the, the the minus sign here, you could have also put that in the um, in the complex case. But in the complex case, um, you know, put, putting in. A, remember, you're allowed to take any complex linear combinations of the of the gammas. So you could have just Thrown in, thrown in a factor of i and got rid of the minus sign. So, so in the complex case, it doesn't you know, putting the minus signs doesn't do doesn't change anything. Doesn't change the algebra. In the real case, because you can't just multiply your gammas by i's, you um, having some minus signs does change the algebra. Okay. Okay. So let me just get now the this this the story about what happens over. You know, I told you this very simple story about what happens for different values of, of n in the complex case. You, you either get two to the d by two to the d complex matrices or two copies of these. What happens in the, over the reals for different values of r and s is actually a much more complicated story. It, um, but you basically you get you get matrices which are which have powers of size powers of two by powers of two. And they're over either the reals or the complexes or the quaternions, and there's a anyway, there, 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 there's a somewhat complicated story about what what these thing what these thing what you know what these guys what these algebras actually look like. But they are I mean they are matrices, and they can be written simply in terms of matrices of real or complex or quaternions. But but the pattern's a little bit complicated. So I'm not going to not going to tell you the general story of what happens for arbitrary values of R and S. But let me just kind of work out what happens for some low values of R and S. Okay, so let's do first. Okay, so so let's do let's work with some examples. So let's do the clear out. Let's do R is equal to zero, S is equal to one. Okay. So what this is is this, so this is this is generators are one and gamma one, and gamma one squared is minus one. Okay. But but the real vector space, the real two dimensional vector space, you know we're linear combinations of this guy, this guy, where this guy squared is minus one, that's just the complex numbers. So this is just gamma one, you just identify gamma one as i, and so this is equal to, a, so this is equal to this c. So this is just a, another way, a complicated way of talking about the complex numbers. It's, the, it's, the, it's this, this real algebra generated by these guys with this relation. Okay, let's do, let's do another one. Um, how do I do this? Then send them to Cliff of zero two R. Okay, so this is gamma one. So this has a basis one, gamma one, gamma two, and gamma one, gamma two. So it's a four real dimensional. Algebra and it's got gamma one squared is equal to minus one, gamma two squared is equal to 
minus one. And, um, and, and you can check if you, if you take gamma one, gamma two, and square it, what you're going to do is you're going to get, um, anyway, you, you use, use the anti-commutation relation. So I guess, I guess also gamma one, gamma two is minus gamma two, gamma one. That's the other relation you have. Anyway, so if you write this out, Use this. Use these these relations, and you can show that this guy is also one four. So you've got um, these three different things, which are linearly independent, and each of which squares to minus one, and which and which anti commute with each other. And you'll see that. And, and this is exactly so. So this is um. This is the algebra. H and quaternions. So in other words, you just said that um, you know that gamma one is equal to what you often call the quaternion i, gamma two is equal to quaternion j, and gamma one, gamma two is k. Okay. So this is just a quaternion algebra. Okay, and then um so Clifford, let's do another one. Three. If you do one one, then this thing is going to have what, 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 what's what, what you what you find is that this this thing is the same thing as um, two by two, as the algebra of two by two real matrices, and you can just see you can see this just by identifying um, so one. Is the same thing as you know the isomorphism goes that one gets identified with the identity matrix, gamma one gets identified with how do I do with this guy, gamma two gets identified with this guy, and then gamma one, gamma two um, gets identified with that guy. And then you could you can check that the relations between um, satisfied by these matrices are just the relations satisfied by by these guys, which are the same thing except um, the only the thing that's changed is that you, 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 this this guy ha has a plus one instead of a minus one. So if you square this guy, you'll get plus one. If you square this guy, you get minus one. But otherwise, but it's so so. So you can see that anyway. So so these these algebras we've written here with these bases are just kind of things we already knew about in a written in a different way. Okay, and then the next maybe the last one I'll do is the Clifford algebra algebra of you know, three of these guys, you know, three zero. And, and, and the claim is that this thing is the um, the claim is that, that this guy is a two by two matrix of a two by two two by it's all two by two complex matrices you can get this way and the um, the relation the relation goes that the um, the what, what, so, 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 so one gets identified with, with the unit matrix. Um, then ga gamma one gets identified with sigma one. So writing in terms of Pauli matrices, um, gamma one, is sigma one, gamma two is, is, has a relation to sigma two, gamma three is sigma three. And then what you find is that the other, the, so gamma one, gamma two, is then sigma three, but but with an i. So remember, this this is this is algebra of the real. So we have to somehow bring the complex numbers into it to get to get all the complex matrices. And then same thing here. So then what? Gamma two, gamma three is i sigma one, um, and gamma one, gamma three is minus i sigma two. 
And then there's one last one, which is gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And that's just, that's i times the identity matrix. So i, i. Okay. So, so, this, so this guy is a, anyway, so over, 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 the, over the reals, this is an eight dimensional algebra. And it's got, um, but it's, it, it, it's kind of over the complexes, it's four dimensional. And so you've got, anyway, this is, this is a very explicitly shows this work out. So you can check that, that each of these, using the properties of the Pauli matrices, you can check that this, the, these guys satisfy all the, um, all, 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 the, all the relations that you know, that you have that, that define this guy. Question? Yeah. Do uh, do filter algebras have to be associative? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all so. So the, the Clifford algebra. Yeah. I mean, I think. I'm not sure if it's even right. I don't know. If, I don't know if you have to make that. I don't know if you have to make that a definition or not. But uh, but in any in any case, yeah. They're 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 associative algebras over that with, with those generators and relations. So if you try to write. Clifford 03R, that wouldn't be the Octonians? No, it's definitely definitely not. Yeah, this is not, okay. yeah, the, the Octonians are not Clifford algebras. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. So, so the, the reals, complexes, and quaternions are Clifford algebras. And if you, and, and general Clifford algebras are just kind of combinations of, are, you know, either one copy or two copies typically of some power of two matrices in the reals, the complexes, or the quaternions. So there's a it's, a, it's a somewhat intricate pattern, and it's a, it's a kind of a beautiful algebraic pattern, and it, it, um, it, it, it repeats with order eight. So if you, if you, you can, what, in the various places, you can find written, written down a whole table of all these things, and then a theorem that says that if you add, if you add eight to N, or if you add eight to R or S, you'll get, the same thing multiplied by um, the same thing tensored with, um, how does it work? Yeah, a a anyway, you, you, you'll, you'll get the same thing where all the dimension, but all, where all the dimensions go up. Go up. Um, so, so, so the general pattern kind of repeats with order eight. And there's a kind of beautiful kind of period to see there. I'm um, just curious. Yeah. Does the order eight relate to the block periodicity? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so so this is kind of a fundamental. So so what I've done here is I mean what I've told you here is just kind of it's kind of pure algebra. You know, this is just al generators, relations, real algebra, whatever. But you know, there are these beautiful relations with geometry we're going to see in a minute. There's also beautiful relations with um, with topology, and so you can you can use this. So so Bot kind of famously used um, yeah you, you use this to kind of. Uh, he, he used this to, to prove theorems about what the topology was of the um, of, of these Lie groups that we've been looking at, um, like the unitary group. So if you want to understand what's the topology of the unitary group in different dimensions, well, if your unitary group is big enough, it turns out the the topology has this nice pattern that it's um, it's zero in odd dimensions, zero in even dimensions, and and some certain thing in, in, in odd dimensions. And that that bot showed that you can prove that using the um, the complex Clifford algebras. And then, if you want to understand the topology of the um, of the orthogonal groups, which are the, then it, it, again, if you, if your orthogonal group is big enough, then the, um, the 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 topology you get the um, the homotopy groups you get if you've studied topology are you know are are given you know by the, Anyway, they're, they're given in terms of the structure of, of these these real Clifford algebras. So it, it's a long and kind of be, and, and kind of beautiful story, but that's it. Can't can't get to that. But yeah, the, yeah. So this is the, and then then bot periodicity. The bot periodicity is the statement that the um, the homotopy groups that once you calculate them, if you, you know, that they're periodic with period eight, and so in, in in the real case for the orthogonal groups and the. The um, homotopy groups of the uh, unitary groups are periodic with period two, but it's the same periodicity of the Clifford algebra. Okay. okay, so that's that's that. So 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 far, this has really just been pure, um, 
pure, pure algebra. Okay. So now, we're, sorry. Yeah. One more question. Like, sure. if we switch the like value for R and S, is there some relation between? Um. Not 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 a simple one. Yeah, not a simple one. I mean, there, there's all sorts of relations between uh, that you can kind of derive between the different Clifford algebras for different values of R and S, and then you once you have enough of those relations, you can kind of figure out what the pattern is. But um, but but yeah, and, and actually one of the great, one of the more stra stranger things that's true actually, for instance, is is that oh, and, and maybe I should say say this here, just tell you that the um, so. So 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 one way which I'm not okay. So the so let me just let me just say write this down here as a last example. Is that um is that my is that Clifford algebra of let's well, let me let's just say this. So so the, so the Clifford algebra for four over the complexes. Now what is so what is it? This is the m. This is d is equal to two, so it's two to the two is four or when I count complex figures. Okay. And, and 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 this this is the algebra of, of this is what you normally think of Dirac gamma matrices. Okay. So it, it, it so if you've we'll, we'll we'll at some point get to these later when we talk about special relativity, but in in special relativity and the theory of the Dirac equation spinners are these Dirac scan matrices, and they're they're really just the example of four here. You know, if you work over the complex complexes, and the statement I was telling you about that you can write all four by four matrices in terms of one gamma one, gamma j, gamma j, gamma k, etc. That's kind of the ba one part of the basic kind of story of how you manipulate gamma matrices. Now the thing which is true. Which, oh, so this is over the complexes. So things are pretty simple over the complexes. And if you look at most physics books, physics books tend to assume that you know you're allowed to throw in complex numbers when you're whenever you're in the mood to do so. And so they're they're really talking about this. But you but but you are really the thing which is really physically relevant is actually if you take three positive numbers, let's say for the space space, and one negative number for the Time and do this over R. Now let's see. Yeah, and then you you get them, but but then the the, the weird the weird the really weird thing that happens is that this is not the same thing as M of one, three, and R. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Of of M of Clifford. And now, I, I forget which is which, and, and it, dep it depends upon your convention. But in, in, in one convention, one of these things is like um, is like two by two is, is, is two by two um, quaternionic value matrices, and the other one is um, four by four real matrices. Okay. So, de so depending upon you know, you you might expect from the what what kind of what what kind of standard ways of dealing with these calculations in physics. It really would imply that it doesn't matter whether you you work with the the version of the the the, the version of the Lorentz metric where with this sign or with this or if you change sign, nothing is supposed to change. But but but, but these are actually different matrices, different kinds of matrices, and. Um, and, and and this is a anyway this this is a, a kind of a, a peculiar part part of the story of, of all these calculations and we'll see this more more when we get to this later but normally the, there's actually something funny going there's definitely some one of those many funny things going on in the story is that the um this out all of this algebra it, it is actually really sensitive to whether you take three positive and one negative as your as as your as your metric tensor in four dimensions, or one positive and three negative, it actually it, it actually changes. If, if you work, you actually get two different things. Anyway, but I don't. But it, it, it's and it, there's 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 
interesting stories. Lots of people debated whether this is a mean, whether this actually means anything physically or not, which I won't can't go into. Okay. This, doesn't that mean that because physically I thought it's always a sign to a function whether or not you choose minus plus 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 or well the, the point is that I mean, there, 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 there's there's actually two but the, the point is that what physicists are doing they're fairly immediately complexifying. So they're almost immediately so when, once you complexify, here here it doesn't matter. Like complex it doesn't matter. So if if you're allowed, you know, if you're kind of rigorous about not using complex numbers when you're when you're not supposed to, that these are these are real algebras, then there's a there's a distinction. If you allow yourself to to throw in complex linear combinations, then you're here, then then so so this guy if you take complex linear combinations is this guy, and this guy, if you take complex linear combinations is this guy, okay? So it, once you throw in complex numbers, the distinction between these disappears. The, the other thing which is true is that, in, and we'll, we'll see this in a minute, in that in both cases, well, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll say that when, when I get to it, but in the, um, in, in, in uh, not anyway, not, not, maybe not, not, let me try, try, try and say this now, but the, um, We'll, 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 we'll get to um, we'll, we'll get to something special which we want to do in geometry, which involves just um, a, Lie, a Lie algebra. The Lie algebra you create out of quadratic things here or quadratic things here. And so maybe just to say that right now is that if you just look at quadratic things in these gammas and quadratic things in these gammas, and you look at them at, and and you'll you'll see that if you if you take commut commutators of them, you get a Lie algebra. The Lie algebras are the same, so 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 th 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 those are the t those are the things where where, you, where the distinction goes away. If, if you just look at quadratic things and think of what you got as a Lie algebra, then the distinction between this and this goes away. Or if you complexify, the distinction goes away. So, you know, is that enough to say that physically there's no difference? There you can you can find people arguing about it. And one last thing to make sure uh, is Clifford of Three one complex number same as Clifford of one three complex number. Well, there there there, there is a the, the definition oh, over the complex number. There's no. I mean, this distinction between plus and minus signs only makes sense over the real numbers. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's a somewhat subtle business. Okay. Let me um. Let's see. Better get. Okay. So so let's let's get on to geometry then about what. What is, how do you do geometry using clever algebras? Okay. That was. Okay, so let me see. There's various ways of motivating this. Um, maybe. Okay, let, let me let me just very very quickly go through this one through the analogy between what we did with um, the symplectic group and, and what we're going to so so what we're going to do is really going to be the the fermionic version of of what we did oh in in the um, re recall that in the bosonic case we had the we had these p and q operators and if we took um, Quadratic combinations of, of them, we got a representation of the symplectic group. Now, what we're going to do with these guys, with these gammas, is we're going to take quadratic combinations of them and get a representation of the um, of the ortho of the orthogonal group. And it's going to be the spin and This is going to give us the spin group and the spin representation. That's that's where this is going. So, um, I'm not sure I wanted to. It's not, well. Okay. Anyway, let me just maybe maybe at least at least say that. So in the um, so the Bozada case. So maybe maybe the good way to say it to say it is that the the the, um, the plus hole bracket bracket um, on on linear. On M is given by um, so 
it's called omega. Let, let's call let, let's call linear functions u u and u. If you have two linear functions u u prime, so let's take u u prime. This is something I've also called in the notes. I've written this as a uh, this is going to be bilinear in u and u prime. It's, so it's, it's a bi, this is a bilinear in u prime and it's anti-symmetric. So this is a bi, bilinear. Um, it, it, it's a bi, it's a bilinear form on on, on this two-dimensional vector on, on this two-dimensional vector space with these linear functions on M. It's it's anti-symmetric and non-degenerate, and, and very explicitly it's given by. Um, so if 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 you take U is you write this as like C some some constant which I'll call Q one times Q one plus some constant which I'll call Q C Q two Q that's no, right P one P one plus and then you, you you do this up to you know up to up, anyway you, you do this you write down D of these guys. Well, this guy, if you think of this as a matrix, he's going to be the matrix it's, that takes C, Q1, C. So, so, so you, if you write these guys as matrices, using these are your basis elements, these are your coefficients, then this um, bilinear form is going to be given by a matrix calculation. And the matrix calculation looks like this. It's C, P1, up to C, Q. D, C, P, D, and then you've got a, a matrix, which looks like, um, actually, sorry, and, uh, this is going to be a matrix. Well, let me just. U is equal to C, Q1, Q1, Q1. Okay, and so, so it's this guy times this guy, C Q one prime. And the point is, that the, the point of the the structure of the um, Poisson bracket, which says that you you only get this is only non-zero when you when you match a Q and a P. Then what you get is you get you get zeros everywhere except you get these blocks that take um, to take one minus one zero. So this is just tells you that it, this is basically the thing that tells you that the Poisson bracket of P one and P one is zero the, of Q one and Q one is zero of P one and P one is zero and the Poisson bracket of Q one and P one is one and the Poisson bracket of in the other direction it's minus one and so you just get a bunch of these. One minus one zeros down to here, and then you get zero everywhere else. So this is just a way of, of writing out. I, I've kind of always thought about this this this, this Poisson bracket, um, you know, with, with not not in matrix terms, but if you just restrict to, to linear functions on the and to, which are things with, with a basis Q1, P1 up to QD, PD, then it's really just a matrix count. This, this anti-symmetric bilinear form is given by this matrix calculation, and it's really just a, a matrix that's zero everywhere except for these two by two blocks of one minus one. And then, then the symplectic group is, um, so SPD, P2D, um, oh, and then R is give, so so what the symplectic group is going to be is it's going to be it, um, it, it, it's G such that omega G acting on U and G acting on U prime is doesn't change. So it, it, it's the group it, it's the group of linear transformations on um, these guys which leave. This, which leave this invariant, which as a matrix calculation, what it is, is it's the matrices. Um, so it's this, or matrices, or, uh, well, as a matrix calculation, it's you, you take the, 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 the transpose 
acting on this guy and G acting on this guy, and so it's okay. And so and, and here I mean this. So if, if you want a very so if you want to kind of drill down and get a more explicit kind of matrix version of what is the um, what is the symplectic group? Well, the, the symplectic group is the group of two by two matrices such that if you take this this matrix and uh, and you know and multiply it by G and by the transpose here, it it's, it, it's, it stays the same. It's the same thing. Okay. So 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 you, you could give a very concrete definition of symplectic group, not the not this abstract one. You could give it. This is a very concrete description of the of the symplectic group, but it's 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 in terms of this particular anti non degenerate anti symmetric matrix of which is just um, a, a bunch of these elementary two by two matrices of, of this specific kind. So question here. Yes. Oh, uh, why do we need to switch the orders of CQ and CP? So in chapter 16, we first write out all of the CQs and yeah. then write all of the CPs, and then we use matrix notation. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you can do it either way. Um, then, okay. then the um, yeah, the problem. The problem. Anyway, yeah. There's and, and it probably would have been a better idea if I stuck to the same convention. But you, but you, 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 you can do it either way. It's just th this way of doing it. Make it you know, puts it in this in the, in this in this form, which I which is, is a little bit. Yeah, it, it's giving me. I, I'm just. It's giving me a better analogy with the next step with the orthogonal groups. Just to, in, in terms of just the pattern of the matrices, you get a different you get a different pattern if you did it. Um, if you put all the Q's first and then all the P's, then you get. Um, um, well, I, 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 anyway, th 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 then you get a different you get a different pattern here, which is a little bit harder to see. Okay. That's all. Okay. 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 But anyway, so, so but this is then the concrete definition of what's the symplectic group. It's the group of matrices that have this property. Okay, so that's now. So, so this was just written to, to to try to give you a um, analogy, and um, and and there's a there's a theorem also which I'm not, which I'm not going to prove, but it, it it basically says that if you've got any um, anyway, if 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 you've got any kind of bilinear form here, which is and which is anti-symmetric. And non-degenerate, then by by a change of basis, you can put it in this form. So there's a kind of a so this is kind of the symplectic version of um, what what what's what sort of call it the um of, of the Gram-Schmidt ortho, ortho, or orthonormalization kind of thing that you can always find a, a basis where where an, an arbitrary anti-symmetric non-degenerate real bilinear form can always be put in this form by a change of basis. Okay, but let's. The reason I did this is I want to get to the. Um, I, I want to kind of write down. I want to write down the geometric analog between analogy between orthogonal groups and symplectic groups. And so, what's going to be true here? Is that, so. So what I wrote down was it was actually the more complicated part of the story. The part, part of the story is the ortho. Let's just do the orthogonal group. So orthogonal groups. And, and, and here, here the abstract thing is that you have um, you have a uh, you have a. Uh, uh, a non-degenerate bilinear form, 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 but it's symmetric. Okay, so everything that I was doing before, it, it, it's the same abstract nonsense, and, and, and it's going to work. Well, and, and I'll, I'll just write it the way you often write it, an inner product with this. Well, with, here I'll write it with, with these curved brackets. 
and then over the um, over C, and then the group, the group preserving this, this is, 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 is the group, is the orthogonal group. So you can think of orthogonal groups as things you get if, if you take a symmetric non-degenerate bilinear form and you ask all of a, so in other words, it, it, it's the thing where you know G, again, G U, G V is, 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 is U V. This is just kind of the definition I gave early on of what's an orthogonal group. Okay, and so, so here, so over C, So if you so I haven't told you yet whether we're dealing with real or complex numbers. If if, we, if we're dealing with with complex numbers, then there's the, um, the this kind of Gram Schmidt ortho ortho normalization shows that if if any if you have any kind of symmetric non degenerate bilinear form, you can put it in the pattern. You know, so you can can find a basis. So matrix. Where the matrix is, and it's just you know one one down to one zero zero. So you can die, you can you can always find a over, over the complex numbers you can always find a um, uh, a, ba a basis so that the, the the matrix expression of this bilinear form is just as I did before is is just this with the identity thing, or if you like, it's just, it's just, you know, in terms of components, it's U1, V1, plus U2, V2, plus U2. In other words, this just means that this is just U1, V1, plus U2, V2, etc. And, and remember, so, so but, but th this is, um, and, and the group is, the group is what, what I'll call O and C. But over over R, um, and what you're used to probably is you, you may have seen if you do the standard Gram Schmidt orthonormalization, you're assuming that you're looking for not just uh, not you have not just the non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form, but also that it's positive. But if if you drop the assumption that the thing is positive, then you have um, you can find a basis a basis. So you get you get a, bu a bunch of ones and then a bunch of minus ones. So where where there's R of these and S of these, okay. and then and then you get the group is O R S C. And so far we we're, we've mostly been looking at. When we've been talking about orthogonal groups, we've been talking about the cases where s was zero, where where the, the, um, the bilinear form was positive, so so you could always make all these things pot plus one. So anyway, so, so so this is the abstract nonsense about groups. So so the analog of over the symplectic in the symplectic case, no matter what the dimension, there's just one. You have an even dimensional vector space, and there's just one symplectic group for the reals, or over the complexes. But if you over the um, if you take take symmetric forms, you, you get the, the exact analogy is over the complexes. They're, they're in each dimension. There's just one orthogonal group. But in um, over the real, oh, sorry, sorry, this is sorry. Over the reals, there's um, there, there, there's the same kind of quest thing of how many plus signs and how many minus signs. Okay, so now let's let's get on to Clifford to, 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 to how do we bring Cl Clifford algebras into this? So the point is that you know just, just as the, the analog of the P's and Q's in the symplectic case and the quadratic things in the P's and Q's in the symplectic case is going to come down to to the the properties of the gammas and the quadratic things in the gammas in the orthogonal group case. It's going to be the same the same pattern. I mean the same general nonsense. But there's various ways to see this. 
Let's see. Okay. okay, let me. So there, there, there's two ways to get at this. So we're talking about so so, so let me talk surface algebra and geometry. So there's so the so the, the relation to geometry is is, is to this um, this geometry where you, where you've got a um, where you've chosen a a, a, a symmetric non-degenerate bilinear form where you have something like an inner product. So Clifford algebra is going to be something, a kind of geometry which, which crucially knows about the inner product. Okay, so now, so, 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 so one, so the fir first way of doing this, I may, okay, so this is, okay, so, so, so what you want to do is in terms of orthogonal reflections, So here's the, the idea is that idea is that all um, all rotation all well is, is that rotations um, are, are are given um, can be built up be, can be done done by by uh, an even by an even number. Okay, so, so this is a way of just, just some, some general kind of Euclidean geometry, which I'm not going to go into. But but you could kind of, if you play around, you can convince yourself if you want. If you're in any dimension, if you want to do a rotation, you can do, um, you know, if you do two reflections, you're going to get some kind of rotation. And if you want to get all possible rotations, you can do it by any even number of reflections. So it's a so long. Uh, so to, to get to that theorem is a bit of work, but it's a, it's a it's a general fact about you know what Euclidean geometry really how the Euclidean geometry works. So what we're going to do is we're going to associate these gamma matrices and these generate the generators of Clifford algebra. We're going to associate two reflections, and so here's the, the idea: is that um, let me just, let me just write it this way. So, so the idea is associate. Identify my Rn with um, with with elements of the Clifford algebra, and and and, I, and, and this is going to work for any. Um, I, I I think the way I'm going to state this, I'll, I'll just state this for the case of um, R. What do I call it? Did I do it in, in the other order? But what other? What other? Um, anyway, O of um, the R and zero R. So I'm I'm going to stick for now to avoid to keep things simple to the cases where where this guy is um it, where you don't have any negative signs where you've got a positive um, inner product. So I, I, and I'll I'll call this just Clifford algebra of of, of, of n R. So. so if I just have one thing here and, and there's no, that means that none of them are negative, they're all positive. And so what you do is you, you just you just identify, um, what did I, on gamma. Okay. So what you do is you identify um, B vector, B, Bn, you identify with, this this is this is the um, the Dirac kind of fine like is the Feynman slash notation that you take your vector and you put a slash through it and what that means is that you you you, you, you really mean G and gamma n. So you, you 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 take your these elements and you identify them with. Uh, and, and, and notice that what this does is this identifies the gamma, the, the gamma, the gammas with the things where this is where you get one of these is one, and everything else is zero. So this, this, this implicitly identifies the gammas with the um, 
uh, orthonormal basis with, with basis elements with unit with orthonormal basis elements. And then what you show is, is you show that um, you show that v slash squared is equal to um, v v. So anyway, if you, just using the properties of the gamma matrices, it's going to be v slash squared is going to be v one squared plus v two squared plus etc. up to v n squared. So it's going to be you know the norm squared, and you see that the um, and then v w v slash w slash plus w slash v slash is twice is minus twice the inner product of these guys. Um, v vector. So 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 inner products you can get by if you want to compute the inner product of these guys, you can just compute you compute this. So this this kind of Clifford product, so you're kind of identifying vectors with Clifford algebra elements of, of things that are in the that are, that are the generators. And then you're taking the, the product of two of and when you take the product of the two of them, the product of two of them knows about the inner product. And I guess I should have said this. So, so, the, so the Clifford product, the product of Clifford algebra, the Clifford algebra in some sense is what you get by taking a vector space within a product and then making a multiplication which just know which knows about the inner product. So normally, if you're given a vector space, you can't multiply elements of the vector space. You can just take linear combinations. But now you can multiply them. But but the multiplication knows about the inner product. And, and this is remember this is this is then one. This is okay. That's good. Now, okay. So now what, now what we want to do is a um, so here's the let me just write down the write down this formula and I won't actually let me not let me not give the deriva derivation but let me just say this is that is that then. So why is the second one having a negative sign? Wait, what? Why is the second equation having a negative sign? But the first one didn't. Um, this was. Uh oh. Okay. You're right. Yeah. I gave. Uh, sorry. It's a matter of. Yeah. So that should have. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Actually, there's a mistake in my notes. Then, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what did I chose the? Um, what was the? Okay, so, so there's a matter of so so the sign here is a matter of convention, and now let me make ah did I mess up the yeah so you're right one of those signs is wrong I messed up the but I want so I I, I defined um yeah I defined it with a plus sign yeah so so you're right so so this, this should be so so this should be um oh sorry I I, I just sorry this is just a plus I just. I, I just, I just read this all around off my notes. But the point is, is that in the um, yes, yeah, so sorry, this is a plus sign. Uh, there is an alternate convention in which you in, in which you take this to be the minus the minus sign. But I'm using the plus sign convention. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay, now now so what, so what I want to then claim. And I think since it's getting late, let me let me not work through the details of this calculation. But but the, the claim is that reflection. Sorry. So the claim is that reflection reflection um, in about. About vector reflection of v vector about w vector is given is given by and I'll, let me say a bit I'll say a bit more about that I mean in a minute by um in, in terms of Clifford algebra relations by v vector no, by v slash goes to um, you take v, v slash but then you conjugate by by w slash 
and then you take a, um, and then there's a minus one, there's a minus sign. Okay. Let, let, let me actually draw a picture to explain what I mean by this this thing, by, by this, by this and, and how you get this formula. Okay. And so, so, so the picture which I've written during here is that if you've got a, um, so if you've got a, you've got some w vector. Yeah. If you if you got some w vector, so it's, you've got some w vector, and and you you've got some some v vector. Okay. What I mean by re, re, reflection with respect to w is you take the you, you take the hyperplane perpendicular to this guy, this guy. And then, then you you reflect this in this hyperplane. You reflect this in this hyperplane. So, so this is this is what I mean by the. This is the. Um, I guess I'll call that. That's the reflected one. Um, and yeah, so this is v vector prime. And so, so what you do if you, if you want to figure out a formula for this guy, you do is you, you you, you just have to show that. You show that this guy, what he is, is let's see, he's um, he's he he he's 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 v vector plus what plus whatever this guy is, so he's v vector, and then you you have to figure out what 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 the vector is that goes from here to here, and that's actually going to be um, minus two. That that's going to be some number times this guy, and it's going to be minus two times. The um, the inner product of v vector w vector over the size of w vector. You could get rid of this guy by making a w vector a unit vector, and then times w vector. Okay. So okay. So if you want to know what this guy is, you, you go here, and then you come back down here. And going from here to here is just some number, some negative number times W vector, and that's that's the number. If you, it's a little easy, easy geometry to see that. Okay, and then so, so then what you do is you just re-express this as um. Anyway, just just re-express this formula. Let me let, let, let me let me kind of kind of stop. You you can then look at the notes and that is that if you if you just re-express everybody. So, so what you do is just change um, v to, 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 to v slash and w um, to, to after the w slash, and then you you, you use the you use the um, the properties of what happens when you multiply Clifford algebra elements, and you get and you and you and you can derive the, this formula for the reflection. So in terms of normal vectors, the formula for reflection is, is this thing, which isn't so bad. But in terms of Clifford algebra elements, the, um, the formula for the re reflection is, is given by a, um, it's just, it's just given by a conjugation. It's, it, 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 you know, it, it's the way you reflect this vector is by conjugating this vector. And, and you and there's an and then there's an annoying minus sign. That's what happens. So why are you so confident that that will have going in there? Um oh yes. Well you, you you can you can show that the um you can show that w slash inverse is w slash divided by w. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so as long as w is not zero, it, it, it has an inverse. Okay. Just because if you multiply, yeah. Anyway, multiply both sides by w slash. So, so this is w, w is w slash squared. So, okay. Yeah. So, 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 so you do, as long as this isn't zero, you can, it has an inverse. And the inverse is also easy to calculate. It's just that. It's a nice thing about Clifford algebra. The, the the inverse of a of one of these guys is just itself. But and, and actually, if if this is a unit, um, 
if w is a unit vector, then the, the inverse is, is just itself. Okay, so now what we want to do So now what we're going to do, so, so, so here, okay, so, so, so now we're, we're kind of done. So what, what we've kind of done is that if we think about our geometry in terms not of the normal vectors we're used to, but in terms of vectors identified with these, the, these linear combinations of the gammas, then we, we know how to do reflections are, are, just, are just conjugations with a minus sign. And, and, and what's going to happen is this, so then, then we're going to have a definition. I do this on. And, 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 and now if, if, you, if you take, if, if you do the product of two conjugations, so if you take, if you do two reflections, what's going to happen here is you're going to get a product of two conjugations. So you're going to conjugate by some by a product of things, and the minus signs are going to cancel. So a an an, an even an even number of let me say that yes, yeah, so an even number of reflections is equal to um, is equal to uh, conjugation. By, by an even number of of, of, of these these guys, these w slash. Okay. So you, you you just do you just do this an even number of times. And 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 the general fact that I told you about, and this 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 gives gives all ro all rotations. It's another way, another way to think about rotations. So then the definition is uh, the group, so spin of N R is the group group of elements. Well, I mean, they're, they're to, to, to make this come out right, let me just say the group of invertible elements of if or of the form uh, omega one slash omega k slash. Um, let, and, and, and to make this easy, let's, let's make this omega vector j is one and then k even. Okay, so, so, so what, what this is, okay, there's, so I, I told you kind of you know, earlier on in the class that there was for, for that the orthogonal group in any dimension had a double cover, which was called a spin group. And this is spin, but, but I told but I didn't tell you, I, I showed you how to construct spin of three and spin of four, but I didn't tell you how you got arbitrary spin groups. And the claim is that this is actually how you get arbitrary spin groups. Is that what there is what you do is you just look at um you know t t t take 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 even numbers of these unit vectors, multiply multiply out the corresponding um, Clifford, Al Clifford, Al Clifford algebra elements, and then, um, and, and then, then, then look at the, and, and, the, and the, these things are going to form. These things are going to form a group. You know, you can, you can multiply. You can multiply these things, and they, they, they have, they have a nice group law. And if you look at what these things do to vectors when you when you conjugate by them, when you conjugate by them, they, um, they're just going to give you a rotation of rotation of the vector. Okay. So what the so the, anyway so so this is a bit 
anyway, th this is a way of, con of constructing the spin group. And, and what, you, what you find is that since it's conjugation by this guy that gives a rotation, you're going to get the same rotation if you conjugate by this guy or by minus this guy. So there's, so it's going to have this twofold thing that um, let me just say that that uh, my, that w one w k slash n minus w one w k give the same rotation. Because the minus sign is going to drop out of the conjugation. Okay. Anyway, and and but but all you, all you really need to know to, to see that this this works is to, is to to believe the general fact about geometry that rotations come from even numbers of um, reflections, and then that kind of fairly elementary calculation of, of how reflections look, look in terms of the Clifford algebra. Okay, let me just say, say one word about, about the next thing, and then we'll... So, I have a question about this. So, is the spin group having any relationship with, uh, with a kind of uh, even combination of, of reflection as, as a matrix in ON could determine its negative one? Is the is to have any relationship? Oh, okay, so, so so maybe a couple of things to say. Maybe the answer to your question is that one. So so first of all, no, no, notice that um. So this this gives. So yeah. So so since anyway, well, for, first of all, this this gives you a group of so so this is this is a group of matrices. Is a group of of. of Two, 2 to the d by 2 to the, well 2 to some yeah some no, some some l, some l matrices so I mean these so so I, I've kind of written all, all, all of these guys are, are matrices so this is just these are all just matrices and but, but it's true that these things will all have rot rotations always have determinant one they don't change rotations don't change the um, the I mean, they don't change the, the um, so a, a reflection, a, a reflection transformation has determinant minus one, okay, and and and, and um, but 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 rotations have determinant one. There, there, there's actually another. Um, so if you take um, take uh, if if you let if you don't take. Take um, k even. Okay, so then what? What you so so what? Th this is giving you a double cover of um, this is giving you a double cover of S O N R. But if 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 you and because it's rotations, but if you if you allow k's to also be odd, then what you get is you get you get and use the same definition, you get something that people kind of as, as, as almost as a joke here, remember, so this guy is gonna give you S-O-N-R. Now, if you want O-N-R, then what you're gonna do is um, you just drop the K-even, which makes the determinant plus one, and you're also gonna get things with determinant minus one, and, and this is what's called pin of, pin of N-R. And this is a double cover of Of, of O of N R. So if you want to talk about things that um uh, that, that also that also change orientation, then then all you have to do is um you, you do the same thing, but just don't don't you know allow reflection allow pure reflections as well, not just um, rotations, and um and you get and you get O of N R, and it, its double cover is pin of N R, and this is a double cover of Spin of that R. Okay. okay. So this is the spin double cover. Oh, sorry, of SO. The spin uh, uh, of the special orthogonal groups. This is the double cover of the general orthogonal group. And um, 
and but, but but you can construct either one of these groups just by looking by taking products of non you know taking taking products of uh, unit length matrices and thinking of them as Clifford algebra elements and, and multiplying them together and 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 very concretely once if you know the these things are just they're just matrices so that, so this is going to give it to you as a group of, of matrices the thing that's a little bit funny is because you're over the reals. These, these are going to be matrices of different sizes, and they may be the matrices may have real complex or quaternionic entries depending upon you know which value of of, of, of of n you're working with. If you want to try to think about them as matrices, okay. So let me then just tell you what. So 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 this was just kind of part one of the story. So part two of the story where I'll go on next time. So next, let me just advertise next time. And we're going to show that the Lie algebra of spin and R, which is the same thing, remember that at the level of Lie algebra, the orthogonal spin groups are the same. But then is the um, is the quadratic combination is the quadratic combination of the um, gamma, gamma j gamma k if you want to know anyway so 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 if, so if, if you take if you think not just about the these gamma matrices, but if you think about the, the matrices you get by taking products of two of them, though if you take the commutator of two of those, you'll get another quadratic thing, and that and, and that's actually that's the well, I'll show next time that that's actually the um, that's that's actually the relations for the Lie algebra of S O N, and that and that's and, and the thing to say that gamma J gamma K generates. Rotations in the J K plane. Okay. So, let, so, so that's what I'll do next time. I'll show you, show you that. That's the second point of view. But, but so there are two kind of different ways of seeing that these Clifford algebras are kind of the right ways to think. Give you a, a different new way of thinking about the geometry when you have an inner product and. Uh, this thing I developed today was one way, and, th and this will be the next one. Okay, so I think I better stop. Stop now. But any so any any, any questions right now, or um, if you got anything, it's good. Yeah, do you have any questions now, Leo? Yeah. Um. So, first of all, spin three is SU two, right? Yeah. Um. So then. Like I'm trying like I, something that seems a little bit inconsistent or weird to me is that so we have these finite number of elements of Clifford algebra. A finite but ba basis, yeah. The, the, the Clifford algebra is it's a basis, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so so if you're interested in spin, so in, in three dimensions, yeah, it might be a good idea. So, so spin spin three of R. Okay now. Okay, so 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 so, this, so one one way of thinking of this is is, is that this is a, a group you get by you get by you can you can get it by looking at um by taking um so so if if you want an even number of products of gamma one gamma two gamma three so taking uh um. Even, yeah, number. Well, I'm a little bit confused. Well, actually, let, let's see. So you want, well, what's what's true is, is that this is SU two, and but but it's also true this is the double cover of SO three R, right? Okay. And, and I shouldn't. I don't even really need R. SO three. So this is a. I don't even really need this here. Okay. But so so this is the double cover and. and it, it is SU two, but the, these guys 
Let's see. So what did I? I think I. I I, I think I actually sh I actually showed this before. I showed the cliff of three zero R was two. Okay. okay. Remember, I showed you that the this algebra was the same as the algebra of two by two complex matrices. So what this is saying is that any all my my gamma matrices they're all two by two complex matrices. And, and if you looked at what the, what they were, they were just the combinations of the um, well. There you can write them in terms of sigma matrices, but it's the same thing. So so spin three is is inside here. So spin three sits. So so, so so remember, this is not a group. This is just a, a vector space of stuff. But but inside here, there are invertible elements, which is the spin group. And this is um this is SU two. Which sits inside, you know, it, 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 it's two by two unitary. These are two by two complex matrices, right? Okay. So, so, so this, so this is at least consistent for that. Does that help? Like, I mean, I, geometrically, uh, how does rotation of angle by any degree occur at the Clifford algebra level? I think that that let me do. That's what I want to do next time. Yeah. So what? I, but but you can see what's going to have what happens here is that um, is that gamma. In this case, gamma gamma oh, gamma one gamma two, which is which is going to be given by sigma one sigma two, which up to signing as a sigma three, um, uh, generates rotations. In the uh, one two plane. So this is what we'll, what I wanted to do next time. But I want to say that you know if you want to if you want the infinitesimal generator of rotate you know so 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 these are actually going to be given if you really want a rotation you want to take e to the theta gamma one gamma two. Okay. Or I guess I should. There, there, I may need an I somewhere, but anyway, you know, actually, yeah, you need a. Yeah, there's an I here. There's an I here. Yeah. And so e to the I theta gamma. And that's that's e to the I theta sigma three. That's a rotation in the one two plane about the z-axis. And it's the same story that I was trying that I was trying to sell you earlier on. That a good way to think about if you think about the rotations in terms of quaternions, rotations are are just given by um, conjugation by some unit quaternion. It's the same thing here. These are kind of unit. If you think in terms of the quaternionic language, these are unit quaternions, and conjugation by these guys gives you is, is what is how you rotate things. So it's everything that I've that I've done here, kind of abstractly in arbitrary dimensions. If you specialize it down to what we're talking about, three or four dimensions, you should be able you should be able to get a consistent story. Okay. So does this? Does this mean that uh, you know rotation by using quaternions is just you know a special case of using Clifford algebra? Yeah, exactly. But we just have the Clifford algebra and quaternion algebra. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So 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 this I, th there's this really nice beautiful thing about what happens in three and four dimensions in terms of quaternions. I mean that that doesn't really generalize. You can't. The generalization of that is this this Clifford algebra story I'm, I'm telling you today and next time. Yeah. But if you specialize it down to this case, it's uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's the quaternions here. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Enough for now. And if you have any longer questions, yeah, come back. I'll turn this off and uh, I can come back and talk for a while. I'll be around for a while. Okay. Okay, bye now and I'll see you on Thursday then. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.